Welcome to Chapter 3. This is the last coverage of the first lecture exam. Surgery of the ear is not that common in clinical practice since most of the ear conditions are addressed with medical management and surgery is only recommended for severe and non-responsive cases. Despite that, there are still conditions wherein surgery is the only long-term solution. Without further ado, let's begin. The ear is divided into three sections, the external ear, which is formed by the pina, the auditory meatus, which serves as the vertical canal, and the short horizontal canal. These canals are cartilaginous except for the deepest part near the tympanic membrane, which is osseous. This membrane is the beginning of the middle ear. After this, the middle ear is formed by the tympanic cavity, and connects to the pharynx through the auditory tube or the eustachian tube. In the cat, the tympanic cavity is divided into two compartments by a bony septum, and the sympathetic nerve fibers are more exposed on the promontory of this septum. The inner ear is completely contained within the temporal bone of the skull, which consists of a membrane, membranous rather, and bony labyrinth, vestibule, cochlea, and the auditory ossicles, the malleus, incus, and stapes, and functions for hearing and balance. The size and appearance of the pina differs among breeds, as you may have noticed. The auricular cartilage determines the appearance of the pina. The base of the ear has several ridges that are important anatomical landmarks for ear surgery. These include the tragus, the lateral cruise of the helix, the pre-tragic incisure, and the inter-tragic incisure. Ear surgeries are indicated for various reasons. Infectious causes such as otitis externa, media, or interna can be ad addressed surgically in chronic cases wherein they are unresponsive to medical management. At times, these infections become so severe and they cause stenotic ear canals, wherein the normal mechanism of the ear in removing dirt is broken or stopped. With the thickened walls due to the chronic inflammation, the bacteria and the cellular debris tends to stay and grow and cause the infection to worsen. One of the most common complications of otitis is oral hematoma, which is only effectively resolved through surgery. We will be discussing this in detail in the next videos. Neoplasms such as adenomas, adenocarcinomas, papillomas, mast cell tumors, and squamous cell carcinomas cause invasion of the ear canal causing pain, discomfort, and the predisposition of the animal to infection. To be able to remove these masses with clean margins, most times, the entire canal is removed. We will discuss this later. In diagnosing ear conditions, you must determine the extent and the severity of the disease before any management is chosen to be prescribed. More than this, the intensive examination of the ear needs to be done for proper diagnosis. I have included an article of the ear examination in our Google Drive for you to read. All clinical signs present in the animal during presentation must be noted and expressed to the owner to prevent confusion with any development of post-operative complications. The importance of diagnostic imaging, such as otoscopy and computed tomography, tomography or CD scan is of utmost importance, especially for assessing the infiltration of a neoplasia. And if there is any infiltration of the soft tissues or surrounding the ear. Client communication is a vital part of every surgery. It plays an essential role in patients with ear conditions because the effectivity of the medical management greatly relies on the compliance of the owners in administering the medications. Also, owners must be made to expect and understand any aesthetic changes seen or that could develop 
post-operatively. You should be able to establish with the clients if there is pre-existing hearing deficits before surgery. Lastly, ear surgeries are usually expensive and have a variety of complications that come with it. So client communication about the risk and the need and the balance for the two for the surgeries is very important. Preoperative antibiotics are recommended in animals undergoing auricular surgery. Severe infection should be treated with systemic and or topical antibiotic for several weeks before surgery is performed, depending on the site of infection. Autotoxic antibiotics such as ventamycin, neomycin, streptomycin, tobramycin, and polymyxin B are avoided in animals with otitis if possible. Otitis externa is best treated with topical therapy because systemic antimicrobials are unlikely to achieve the therapeutic concentrations within the fluid and exudates of the external ear canal. Systemic antibiotics are indicated in otitis media because the highly vascularized mucous membrane lining the tympanic cavity of the inflamed middle ear promotes diffusion of drugs from the blood to the bulla. Performing culture and antibiotic sensitivity is an essential step of the diagnosis of ear infections. If client compliance is not an issue and the problem is still recurring, you must make sure that the microbes in the ear are susceptible to the medications you have prescribed. The most common isolates in dogs with otitis externa are malassezia, and staphylococcus pseudo-intermedius. Other bacterial isolates are outlined on the table on the left, and the antibiotics they are susceptible or slightly resistant to. The common bacteria which are usually resistant to the common antibiotics that we use are Pseudomonas aeruginosa and Enterococcus. There are three common surgical procedures on the ear. Oral hematoma correction is indicated for cases of oral hematoma, which ensues after repeated trauma to the ear or direct penile trauma. Lateral ear canal resection, where in the lateral wall of the ear canal, it's reflected ventrally to act as a drain board, as you can see in this image right here. This technique will make administration of medications easier and to boost compliance of the clients. However, in cases wherein the lateral ear canal resection is ineffective or if a mass is blocking the ear canal, a total ear canal ablation is indicated. We will be discussing the oral hematoma correction in the next lecture videos. Since lateral ear canal resection and total ear canal ablation, or TICA, are not that commonly done in clinical practice, I have provided you with reading assignments for you to learn about them. See you in our next lecture.